2020, it has been the most unsettling of years, but amid all the sadness and uncertainty, we can still find hope. In these turbulent times, we turn to people who inspire, uplift, and show of us right in the world. For 15 years, here in St. Louis, we've celebrated the Musio Awards. We honor their year's greatest moments of sportsmanship and those who embody class and character. It's a fitting tribute to Stan Musio, the ultimate good sport. And it reinforces that decency and civility still win the day. On the 100th anniversary of Stan Musio's birth, we share the gift of sportsmanship. Welcome to the Musio Awards. CBS Sports and the St. Louis Sports Commission and National Sportsmanship Foundation present a celebration of class and character. Honoring Baseball Hall of Famer Hank Aaron, NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace, tennis star Madison Keys, and those who show extraordinary sportsmanship. These are the 2020 Musial Awards presented by Maryville University. Now, Mike Bush. Hello from St. Louis, where normally we'd come to you from the historic Stiefel Theater. But as we all do our part to stay safe, our celebration of sportsmanship in America takes a different form this year. Thankfully, even in a time when so much has been upended, we still have much to recognize. We start with an NFL lineman who could have spent the offseason resting and reveling in a Super Bowl title. Instead, he joined the battle against COVID. Laurent Duvernay Tardif put aside his own comforts and success to help his fellow citizens. That's the ultimate example of sportsmanship in the pandemic. Winning may not be everything, but for a professional athlete, it sure beats anything. Laurent Duvernay Tardif was the starting right guard on the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. He was wrapping up the third year of a five-year, $42 million contract. But less than three months after winning a Super Bowl ring, he went from the offensive line to the pandemic front lines. Bonjour, bonjour. Duvernay Tardif is a graduate of the prestigious McGill Medical School, the only med school grad in the NFL. He still has to complete his residency program, but when the pandemic hit, being on the sidelines was not an option. I have six years of medical training, uh, and I was like, there's no way uh, we cannot find a spot for me, and, and I want to be part of the solution. He cut short a postseason vacation in the Caribbean and traded a scuba mask for a face mask. After quarantining for 14 days, he was soon caring for patients in a long-term care facility just outside Montreal, Canada, where he grew up. So I register as an orderly slash nurse slash basically everything they wanted me to do. He helped the nurses, he helped the staff, he helped the patients in ways that you can't imagine. Pulling off shoulder pads and putting on scrubs is nothing new for Laurent. He missed his own draft party in 2014 because he was at the hospital assisting with an emergency C-section. And even with the COVID workload, he was still keeping up with his off-season workouts. I remember, you know, I would go to a shift and come back home just in time so I can do my online workout with the Chiefs. Duvernay Tardif was risking his health every day and then risked his football career. When the time came to go to training camp, he opted out, deciding he needed to stay to care for his patients. I always felt like my passion for football and my passion for medicine were able to like work together. And, and I think at that point, it was the first time that I felt like one was not really serving the other. He hopes to return to the field in 2021. In the meantime, he's cheering on his teammates and learning more than ever about teamwork. When you play football, teamwork goes without saying, you know, you cannot win a game by yourself. When you're on the floor, you know, working with, you know, orderly nurses, doctor, it really takes everybody's effort in order to give the best care possible to your patient. None of us can accomplish as much as all of us. That's true for both athletes and doctors. I mean, he's showing, uh, I think, uh, above and beyond the call of what we can ask him to do. And he's an, an amazing example of what it is to be a doctor and to be a professional uh, like athlete like he is. Laurent Duvernay Tardif. Protecting quarterbacks is his passion, 
but protecting patients is his mission. He has class, he has character, he, he has integrity, he has everything. Besides that, he's going to be an amazing doctor. Laurent continues to work shifts at the long-term care facility near Montreal, and he credits the Chiefs and head coach Andy Reid for being so supportive of his decision to be on the front line instead of the offensive line. Staying with the pro ranks, earlier this year, American tennis player Madison Keys launched Kindness Wins, a platform to encourage and celebrate acts of kindness. Even as she competes at the highest level, Madison is devoting time and energy to make a difference in how we treat one another. We honor her for bringing kindness and sportsmanship to the masses. Yay, so much it's gotten so easy to be unkind to people. That was really what inspired me. The big idea behind Kindness Wins was creating a organization where any athlete could join and become a part of it. Michaela and Oksana were both very excited. We are the first three champions, and we're obviously looking to expand. Madison has always struck me as someone who represents kindness and is a great model for others. What she's done has been absolutely amazing. There's no one else in the world that that would have meant as much as it did. Everyone says, well, as long as you want, it doesn't matter, as long as you want. And that was not how I was raised. My mom not only said those things, but also followed through. If you <laughs> won a match, but you acted like a brat, <laughs> definitely not happy with you. Keys closes in style. And once again, he's through to the third round. All three of the champions have medals of kindness. The little girl that we gave the first one to, she was, what, eight or nine? Hi, Chelsea. This is Madison Keys from Kindness Wins. I am so honored to be giving you the very first medal of kindness. I've heard all of the hard work that you've been doing with collecting art supplies for homeless shelters, foster care systems, and schools during COVID. To have this honor is absolutely amazing, and I think especially right now, to be included in that means the absolute world to me. You can find out more about Madison's efforts to promote kindness at kindnesswins.org. Coming up, a high school basketball star's courageous comeback. Good evening. Maryville University is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Musial Awards. In the midst of a global pandemic and the battle for racial and social justice, the values of civility, compassion, and sportsmanship are needed now more than ever. Stan the Man embodied those values, and Maryville is honored to stand by his legacy. So on behalf of the second fastest growing university in the nation, Maryville welcomes you to the Musial Awards the most important night in all of sport. Just days before the college basketball season came to a halt in March, two teams set the stage for one of the year's most touching moments in sports. It was the culmination to a remarkable comeback for Josh Spidell, who's receiving the Musial Award for his resilience, determination, and for giving us hope and inspiration. Home isn't always the place you live. Sometimes it's the place you love. That's how Josh Spidell feels about Memorial Gymnasium in Columbus, Indiana. This was uh, Josh's home for four years. Growing up, Josh was as much a fixture here as the hoops and the grandstands. But no one could have guessed how long the road would be to get back here. As a standout forward at Columbus North High School, the six foot seven Spidell was one of the top basketball players in the state. I think it was eighth grade I got my first Division I offer. Josh got offers from just about everywhere and then surprised just about everyone when he accepted a scholarship from the mid-major University of Vermont. You know, he just uh, felt at home, I guess, and, and uh, saw his, uh, his role and his potential, and, and um, yeah, we were really fortunate to get him. But on February 1st, 2015, in the middle of a senior year in high school, everything changed. 
One night after scoring 33 points with 18 rebounds, the phone rang at his parents' house. And they said, um, we need you to get to the emergency room. We need you to get here as soon as possible. Josh had been in a terrible accident. He mistakenly pulled out of a fast food restaurant when a sport utility vehicle slammed into his Honda Accord. No one else was seriously hurt, but Josh had a traumatic brain injury. I remember walking into the emergency room bay, and I remember people looking at me, like feeling sorry for us and shaking their head. Doctors weren't sure he'd survive, but he woke up after spending four weeks in a coma. And then for the longest time, I was, I was always asked, is, it, is this a dream? He couldn't talk, walk, or use his left arm. But his recovery was not about perfection, it was about progression. And every day, he'd get a little better. And we celebrated the small things. Every I mean, little was, thing. He'd do something, I'd go, man, you couldn't do that yesterday. Through it all, the Vermont players and coaches stuck by Josh. And just eight months after the accident, he was strong enough to make it to a Vermont game when they played at Purdue. <laughs> Getting back on the court became Josh Spidell's therapy, but it was not likely to happen. Until last March, when Coach Becker and Josh's teammates hatched a plan to get him into a game and the box score. I wanted to make sure that all the hard work um, paid off in some way. In Vermont, it's time for America East basketball. It would happen on senior night. So Coach Becker reached out to Coach Will Brown of Albany, their opponent, to see if he'd think about letting Josh get an uncontested layup. You know, I said, John, I said, I don't need to think about this. I said, you know, let's do it. A very special senior day here in Burlington. In sports, even great games are sometimes hard to remember but few at Patrick Gymnasium will ever forget this night. Here in Burlington, and we're underway. Five years after his terrible setback, Josh Spidell made his comeback. Everybody gets a touch, and here's Josh Spidell. That night was unbelievable. In my 20 years at Albany, I've never been so excited for an opponent to score against us. For the world to see Josh make that layup, we hope that it was that reminder that no matter what life faces, surround yourself with people that love you, work hard, and know that God has a bigger plan. After graduating from Vermont with a major in education and a 3.4 GPA, Josh is back home in Indiana teaching and coaching middle school basketball. Congratulations, Josh, on the Musial Award. Coming up, it took a team to make an Olympic dream come true. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Musial Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University. Many connections, one you at maryville.edu. Edward Jones, it's time for investing to feel individual. And United Healthcare, what care can do. 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of Stan Musial's birth. The Baseball Hall of Famer would have turned 100 on November 21st. Stan the Man was one of the greatest to play the game, and he treated everyone with kindness and respect. It's why the awards celebrating extraordinary sportsmanship are named in his honor. In February, Alphine Tuliamo qualified for the Olympics by winning the U.S. Olympic Marathon Trials. Her journey to get there is a story of incredible perseverance, but it's what happened at the finish line that made Alphine and teammates Stephanie Bruce and Kellen Taylor deserving of the Musial Award. In a moment when emotions typically focus on one's own performance, three runners came together to embrace graciousness, empathy, and sportsmanship. 
I think when you picture running, it's like it's this solo, selfish pursuit, right? We all have these individual goals. You know, we're trying to be the best in the country and the best in the world. The only way you're going to do that is by having this collective goal. Steph and Kellen are original members of our team. So Steph's kind of the leader of the team. She's a mom figure, but she's also a killer on the course. For, for Kellen, it's not about the fame or, or certain times or certain places. It's just about answering that question, how good can I be? Alfie's story is amazing. It's the American dream, literally. So I grew up in a very small rural village in Kenya, a village of about uh, 500 people. And so when we were growing up, you know, we had to run to school and our school was like two miles away. My dad um, is married to four wives. He has 32 children. So I was very fortunate enough to get an athletic scholarship to come to a U.S. college. And after that, you know, I decided to pursue pro running. And here I am today getting ready to represent the uh, United States of America. We certainly had high expectations going into the training segment that would lead into the trials. At least in the public's eye, Kellen was thought of as, as one of the favorites to make the team. Many very good women dropped out of that race, and Kellen finished it off even if it was far, far from her goal. Eventually it became clear that Kellen wasn't going to be able to, but it, it was possible that Steph could. So we were very engaged the whole time watching to see if Alephine was going to win and if Steph could catch third. I realized probably with 100 to go that three people were ahead of me. So I was not making it. I didn't know who it was. I didn't realize until someone yelled, Alphine won. As Kellen was coming in, it was almost like this like trifecta. We just kind of, like three sides of a triangle, we kind of just met each other. How do you celebrate your performance, yet at the same time recognize that your teammates are here and their dreams didn't come through that day, but the way they handled themselves was incredible. Knowing that I didn't have a good day, but Alephine did, and she did what we had set out to do was really special. We say like Alephine made the team, but we kind of made the team. You know, to pour your heart and soul into trying to make this Olympic team, and you're coming down that straight away, you have to cross knowing that you didn't make it. You know, the first thing they do is, is go over to Alephine, give her a big hug, wrap themselves in the flag, and cry tears of joy. <laughs> to me, that was the most inspiring thing that I've witnessed uh, as a coach or, or just as a fan of the sport in the 25 plus years I've been a part of it. Stephanie and Kellen still have a shot to join Alphine on the U.S. Olympic team. They hope to qualify for the Tokyo Games in the 10,000 meters. United Healthcare celebrates Alphine, Stephanie, and Kellen for their extraordinary moment of care. They are shining examples to us all that there is no limit to what care can do. Coming up, we go to the racetrack, the Musial Award for Extraordinary Character. Well, I'll tell you, it was a privilege to be a friend of Stan Musial. If you knew him, you realize uh, how much class he had and everybody was important to him. So I just want to say happy birthday, Stan the man. The Stan Musial Award for Extraordinary Character is one of two special honors bestowed by the Musial Awards. It recognizes an individual who demonstrates remarkable poise, perseverance, and sportsmanship. This year's recipient, an athlete who's had a profound impact on his sport and the dialogue surrounding racial justice and unity. As the nation grappled with those issues, Bubba Wallace took a courageous stand for change, underscored by his push for NASCAR to ban the Confederate flag at races. Under the media microscope, he showed grace and humility. The lone black driver on NASCAR's top circuit, Bubba is a trailblazer in his sport. We honor him for the character he's displayed and hear from Bubba himself as part of a special conversation with CBS's James Brown. As Bubba Wallace's mom, you know, I'm very proud of him and I try not to get emotional about it because he's been through a whirlwind of, 
you know, ups and downs. I am proud of those that stand with him. I'm proud of, of NASCAR, because they stand with him. He's at an age in his life that, okay, I can either make some things happen or at least try to, and some people are gonna like it, and some people are not. Hats off to, to NASCAR. It creates doors and allows the community to come together as one, and uh, that's what the real mission is here, so I'm excited. He surprised me, and I think he surprised a whole lot of people to take the stand that he has taken and to endure a lot of the hate that has come his way. He wants everybody to be able to come out and enjoy the sport that he loves. What was really great about it was all the drivers and owners, NASCAR, ever got, everybody got behind Bubba so that he could continue uh, what he'd already started as far as uh, you know being able to be a spokesman. Uh, I think Bubba's brought out some different situations that maybe a lot of us didn't th think about. We just sort of let it go by. So you got a lot of people thinking about a lot of different things, and hopefully in the long run, it's going to make the societies all come closer together. I think for him, it made him realize, you know, if there's anything that I can do, you know, it's time for me to do it. You've got young kids looking up to him. You know, they want to be like Bubba. They want to get in a race car. They want to drive fast. Put your tires on. When you say his name, um, you know, I think that's just a, a person that I've looked up to for a while. Uh, these are just win banners for everybody's first wins. So we got Bubba up there, Sergio Pena, and Daniel Suarez. Further down the line, you know, I would have to, you know, represent some of that stuff and, you know, carry that weight and stuff like that. So to, to see how he's handled it and it helped pave the way for us, it's really motivating. As far as leaving a legacy, you know, in your sport or whatever you do in life. A lot of people don't get that opportunity. So no, this was not a time to, to be still, be silent. It was a time to speak up. Bubba, first of all, congratulations on an outstanding award. I'm not certain how much you may know about Mr. Stan Musial, uh, but do you understand how significant and iconic a figure he was? What an exceptional ball player he was, but even beyond a, a greater person um, down to earth, cared for others more than he cared for himself, and uh, that speaks volumes, so it's an honor. What has this past year been like for Bubba Wallace? Whew, I don't want to mess up my hair. I think I hit all the gray hairs, so... <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's definitely been stressful, but through the, the, the darkest moments have, have been a lot of positive light moments. I mean, uh, I don't know if by speaking up, uh, speaking out and standing up for what's right, uh, I'd be talking with you today. My race team this year, I've been a part of for three years, Richard Petty Motorsports, has stuck with me through the thick of it and have been there to support. And without their support, again, I don't know if I'd be right here today saying these words. And so it's a, it means a lot to have so many people, so many positive people in your corner to help you achieve what you want to. How difficult was it for you to have the conversation with NASCAR officials, uh, the movers and shakers, about the Confederate flag and other issues that were on your heart? Uh, honestly, it wasn't difficult at all. Um, you know, I'm a person, you ask me what's on my mind, how I'm doing, I'm going to tell you just simply because you asked. Um, and uh, I think we were on CNN with Don Lemon, and he was, hey, what do you think NASCAR could do next to, to keep it going? And I said, let's get rid of the Confederate flag. Simple as that. Two days later, Steve Phelps, president of NASCAR, called me and said, hey, we're getting rid of the Confederate flag. And I'm like, all right, cool. And that was it. <laughs> How are you hoping going forward, especially you talk about new and exciting things, mm -hmm. racing for the team of uh, Denny Hamlin and uh, what was that basketball player's <laughs> name uh, who's now moving into the NASCAR? Talk, yeah. Michael Jordan, talk That's about right. talk about uh, the excitement associated with that, Bubba. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited. It's an exciting outlook on for myself, my family, my close friends that, that just know how important racing is, like you mentioned before. Uh, one thing that eats at me is, there's multiple things that eats at me, is, is being winless, that's for sure, but knowing that I became kind of a household name for things I did off the racetrack instead of on the racetrack. So I kind of want to bridge that gap and have some great success on the racetrack moving forward and have a great future in the sport. What are you hoping from your heart of hearts that people will hear and understand in society at large? Giving people the benefit of the doubt, not being so quick to judge, uh, learn about one another, you know, 
talk to people, ask how they're doing, ask, hey, what type of person are you? You don't stop trying to be better. And I think uh, that's the biggest thing is as long as you're trying, you know, and you can lay your head down at night saying like, hey, I did a lot today to make myself a better human. And, and I can talk, go talk to my brothers and sisters, not your blood brothers and sisters, but your neighbors, people that live across the street, people that, you know, you work with. Those are your brothers and sisters. We're all family in this deal. And, and the world's going to be a better place if we're all working together. Hey, Bubba, before we step away, I understand that the award is actually on site. Can we take a look at that and see how good you look holding that award? <laughs> yes, sir, we can. Here it is right here. Perfect. Oh, my goodness. Where there would that is. Now, where would that go in your collection of trophies? You know, that's a great question. I will uh, definitely be making room anywhere for this. Bubba, again, let me just thank you so much for your time. What an awesome young man much more mature than I was at your age, and I wish you nothing but continued success. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. On behalf of St. Louis-based Worldwide Technology and its employees around the globe, congratulations, Bubba, on the Stan Musial Award for Extraordinary Character. We are all so proud of you for being such a pioneer in advancing diversity in your sport. Coming up, honoring a high school basketball coach and a twist on appreciating the referee. Welcome back to the Musial Awards, presented by Maryville University and produced by the St. Louis Sports Commission and the National Sportsmanship Foundation. What an honor to be a part of Stan the Man's legacy. And today we just want to take a moment to say happy birthday, Stan the Man. Happy 100th birthday. We had about an hour outside of St. Louis to find our next honoree, a high school basketball coach who set a wonderful example of fairness and respect. Sometimes back roads can take you back to what's important. This is Silex, Missouri, home to less than 300 people, which means even new students at the high school are usually old friends. The kids grow up together usually from preschool up till their senior year, and it's, it's very close-knit. Jump, two legs, catch and shoot. Sabrina O'Haran is the girls' basketball coach. Had a girl. Good. Her students say Good. setting the offense is not as important to her Good. as setting an example. Good way to communicate. Being able to make an impression and have an impact on these kids' lives is, is my passion. And she drove that home on a trip up the road. Some 30 miles from Silex is Louisiana, Missouri. Though the town has more than 10 times as many people as Silex, only a handful of girls tried out for the basketball team. We had some girls that we thought would come out and play and ended up deciding not to. Uh, so we kind of struggled with numbers all year long. It got so bad that when senior Misha Campbell tore the ACL in her knee, she kept on playing. I felt like I'd be letting the team down if I didn't play. In their first meeting of the year, Silex beat Louisiana but barely. I was personally nervous to play them again just because I didn't know if they would come back stronger. Ready for Silex at Louisiana and we'll start. But if the Lady Owls had just enough in the first game, the Lady Bulldogs weren't sure they would have enough to even play the second game. It was our senior night, so it was our girls' last home game. And a coach came to me and he like, you know, we got a little bit of a sickness bug going through. Uh, I don't know how it's gonna go. Louisiana started the game with seven, five starters, two on the bench. But that changed after illness, injuries, and foul trouble. And once the third quarter started, it just all went downhill. And we're gonna have a foul. Soon, they were down to just four. That's it, she's done. With so few players to begin with, something like this wasn't unexpected. Now hold on, and uh... But what happened next was. I think Silex is going to pull a player. Silex could have played five on four, but Coach O'Haran started pulling her players off the court. Tell you what, that's absolutely good that sportsmanship. Is, yeah, that's great sportsmanship. Went down to four, she went down to four. Oh, Jaden Womack had to come out of the basketball game. We went down to three, she went down to three. We were like, kind of amazed that they actually went down to three because we've never seen that before. That is uh, definitely a first for me. It was actually part of the game plan. 
She always told us if you're not fair to everyone, it's not like you really won. So we wanted to give them a competitive game while also being fair to them. A basketball court can be a classroom about life. I'm so proud of my kids when I see them doing the right thing without somebody watching if they don't even know I'm there. And it's only right for me to do the same thing. You know, I have to lead by example. One coach showing that doing the right thing can mean everything. It's a huge show of their character. Coach O'Haran and her team won the game that night, recording a victory not just in the record books, but for sportsmanship as well. Our stories of sportsmanship often take on a serious and emotional tone. But here's a twist. You're about to meet Max Gershman and Chris King, the originators of Referee Appreciation Night. That's right, Max and Chris are bringing sportsmanship to the forefront with an amusing approach. Their intent may be lighthearted, but in their own fun and clever way, they're contributing to a culture of civility. And for that, they embody the spirit of the Musial Awards. It's not easy to be a referee. Half of the stadium is angry at their calls. Referees have never been treated well. People doing the job of trying to enforce fair play. No one's going out there and celebrating them, and especially at a hockey game. Let's celebrate them. My name is Max Gershman. I'm Chris King. So this is uh, Barclays Center, and this is the sort of the home of, of Rough Night. It started small. I think we got 27 people total to show up with us the first year. Third year, we had around 300 people sign up. So it's really just continued to grow I'm at, a, at a pretty incredible pace. There's an entire two sections of their officials, and they've been cheering every icing, every offside. They're having a hoot. like to think that the uh, the refs feel our presence there and appreciate, you know, at least once a year getting a little bit of recognition. I think they definitely appreciate us and all we can hope is that they get the same excitement out of it as we do. My name is Steve Barton. Done almost 1,300 games uh, in my career. I've seen a lot. You usually skate out and you, you expect some some jeers and some boos and some, some name calling, but uh, all of a sudden we're getting an ovation. And I immediately thought it was because of Justin, because he, <laughs> cause no one ever cheers for me. It was a pretty neat evening. At the beginning, I was like, what the heck is that? And so I turned around and I saw all those guys in the corner. That was amazing. We just thought it was a referee, uh, you know, kind of a get together evening. We didn't know that Max and Chris had, had uh, organized this stuff as an appreciation for officials. Here we go, refs. Well, Here we, go. we were fully rooting for the referees. There's been a Let's Go Refs chant already here this afternoon. -E -F -S, refs, refs, refs. The times that our group will cheer are when none of the other fans in attendance are cheering. Rule it offside, though, by Thomas Grice. Icing when one team dumps the puck all the way down the ice, which is arguably the most boring part of the game. Icing here as it jumped over the stick at Tavares. We're there to make sure that, you know, they're feeling supported. I saw that, like, every time we were making a call, that was, like, a cheer and stuff like that. Usually we get booed, but that was, uh, uh, that's why I make lots of call that night. I'm just kidding. We loved hockey and we weren't going to be professional players, so, you know, so we found a way to stay in the game and, and give back to the game, uh, make the game better, keep it fair and safe. So I think what Max and Chris are doing is great because it, it tells people that, hey, there's people that support officials. Cheer for every part of the game, whether, whether it be, uh, you know, whether it be the game itself or the people that make it happen. Well done, Max and Chris. And it's not just the officials who feel the love, Ref Appreciation Night has a charitable component, too, each year raising money for a good cause. Enterprise, proud sponsor of the NHL and the Musial Awards, joins NHL referee Kelly Sutherland in recognizing Max Gershman and Chris King. Thanks, guys, for your support. Congratulations on the Musial Award. Thanks, Kelly. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Kelly. We're always cheering you on. Like Max and Chris, Enterprise believes in the power of picking up others. Coming up, we cross the pond to honor a team that stepped up to do the right thing. 
This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Musial Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University, many connections, one you at maryville.edu. Enterprise, when you're ready, we're ready. Worldwide technology, make a new world happen. And Budweiser, this Bud's for you. Happy 100th birthday, Stan. Uh, I'll never forget meeting you when I was about eight years old at brunch at Musial and Biggie's. You played harmonica and you gave me a dollar. Uh, that doesn't say it all about you, then nothing does. Thanks for representing St. Louis and baseball and humanity in the way that you have your whole life. It's not often you hear something like this. A team secures a spot in a major tournament and then volunteers to withdraw so another team can take its place. Well, that's what happened recently in the sport of lacrosse. A deep regard for history and international camaraderie paved the way for an amazing gesture of selflessness and sacrifice. It has the Iroquois Nationals headed to the World Games and a Musial Award on its way to Ireland lacrosse. Because the 2022 World Games is a multi-sport event, there are only eight teams which would be invited to compete. Because the Iroquois Nationals aren't recognized by the International Olympic Committee, they would not get an invite for that event. This is unusual that the Iroquois Nationals, the third best team in the world, weren't able to compete in this major event. Has there been a mistake? Is our invitation lost in the mail? And we're third in the world. We're the originators of the game. There's no better ambassadors for the game. It's kind of an old story. You know, we've always had a challenge being who we are. The sport of lacrosse has a, an extremely unique history. The indigenous people of North America have been playing the game for hundreds of years. They have gifted the game of lacrosse to the rest of the world. The Onondaga Reservation is just a couple miles from here, where this sport of lacrosse originated from. French call us Iroquois. English call us Six Nations. Uh, Haudenosaunee is our proper name. This is the uh, birthplace of the long stick game. Including the Iroquois in the World Games, it's necessary. I think this issue hit a chord with a lot of people. It also evoked the potential that sport and sportsmanship can have in promoting ideals of social justice. Rules and conventions and pro policies that have been in place in the past may need a fresh look. They may need to be revisited in light of, of, of current events, in light of what's happening in our world today. Our players, our fans, our administrators, and our supporters were wanting to know what could Ireland do to enable the Iroquois Nationals to compete. They recognized this as an opportunity to give back. We got in touch with Ireland Lacrosse, and it was a very, very simple discussion. We were ready with an answer, and I said, you know, guys, we're going to make this very easy. We're willing to voluntarily vacate our position in this tournament to ease the pathway for the participation of the Iroquois Nationals. Turned over to Lyle Thompson, and he scores! Now, I feel like I got even more to play for. It has been a huge moment for lacrosse history. What it did was really bring the whole lacrosse community together as one mind. What they've done is put the values of our, of, of our game, the creator's game, into action. Peace, friendship. That was our foundation of, of the game. I've said there's no reason for you to be so thankful to us. We are grateful to you. Everything that I personally and that everybody involved in lacrosse in Ireland gained from the sport, we owe to the Iroquois. For them to give up a spot in the World Games that everybody struggles for. It is a, a good ray of light, and we should make the most of it. Testament to its gesture, Ireland Lacrosse is the first recipient of the Musial Award from outside North America. Back here in the States, we look forward to seeing the Iroquois Nationals when they compete in the 2022 World Games in Birmingham, Alabama. On the 100th anniversary of Stan Musial's birth, Budweiser celebrates Stan the man for embodying class, humility, and sportsmanship. Happy 100th. This Bud's for Stan. Coming up, the Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award.
the Stan Musial Award for Extraordinary Character and the Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship are presented thanks to the generosity of Edward Jones. On the 100th anniversary of Stan the Man's birth, it's fitting we hit it out of the park with this year's Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award winner. Who could be more deserving for the highest award for sportsmanship than one of the most respected sports figures of all time, Hank Aaron? His strength, goodness, and decency make him an American hero. We celebrate Hammer and Hank for embodying sportsmanship in all he overcame and all he accomplished. And we hear his thoughts on Stan and receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award as he talks to another Hall of Famer, Bob Costas. For me, Henry Aaron is part of baseball royalty, and you feel his presence. Once again, a standing ovation for Henry Aaron. He's always been cool, calm, and collected. He wasn't distracted by the fame. He never gave in to the fears. He also resisted the glory. Henry Aaron has tied the great Babe Ruth, the record they said that couldn't be reached. His selfless approach to wanting to make a difference in society, his battle and support of civil rights. When people think about Henry Aaron's illustrious career, very few of them know that it began in the Negro Leagues. All of those players who made that leap from the Negro Leagues to the Major Leagues, they were all carrying the weight of their people. Aaron waiting, the outfield deep and straight away. Fastball is a high drive in the deep left center field. Buckner goes back to the fence, it is gone! You think about 1974, Vince Gully put it in perspective, how important it was in Atlanta, to Georgia, to the country, and really the world. What a marvelous moment. A black man is getting a standing ovation in the Deep South for breaking a record of an all-time baseball idol. And it is a great moment for all of us. He was blessed to be able to play for so long. But it was great for all those years. It's only fitting that Henry Aaron would be part of any event recognizing the great Stan Musial because they did have a wonderful connection and greatness appreciates greatness. He's very generous with everything he's got, but most of all, his spirit and his love for all mankind. It's a calm mind and a pure heart. An example not only for baseball players or for athletes, it's a model for life. And we're joined now by Hank Aaron. Hank, happy to talk with you under these circumstances, but we know how much you wanted to be in St. Louis on November 21st, which would have been Stan Musial's 100th birthday. And your willingness to travel to St. Louis for that event speaks volumes about how you felt about Stan Musial. I really, I, I cared an awful lot for Stan. Stan and I traveled to Vietnam many, 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 many years ago. And he and I got to be, well, we got to be friends, teammates, so to speak. And uh, we got along very well. Both you and Stan have glorious statistics. Your names dot the record books. Look at your page or Stan's page on baseballreference.com, and every category in which you lead the league is in bold type. And it's nothing but bold type under Hank Aaron's name and under Stan Musial's name. But here's a statistic that's really revealing. Both of you played well over 20 years in the major leagues. Neither one of you was ever ejected from a game. So this award is about sportsmanship. In addition to everything else, both you and Stan exemplified sportsmanship. I think that's one thing that I can brag about is that I never was thrown out of a ball game. I, I just felt like that there was things that uh, I was put out there to do, and that was to play the game. Uh, I could not umpire. Uh, the umpire had to do that. And I had to play the game the way that it was supposed to be played. And I am just so grateful that I was able to play as long as I did and never got thrown out of one ball game. So many 
superlatives and adjectives can be applied to both of you because you're among the all-time greats, not just Hall of Famers, but upper tier Hall of Famers, elite among the elite. But I think the words consistency, because year in, year out, you and Stan were right around the same level of performance. There weren't peaks and valleys. You were both consistent, decency, humility, sportsmanship, and respect. All of those words rightly apply to the two of you. So you weren't just contemporaries as ballplayers. I think, it's fair to say, you were kindred spirits as people. The most important thing that I got from Stan, not only his, his truthfulness, what he stood for, and what I stood for, but the thing that I, I loved about him was the fact that he was a genuinely pure human being. He, it was nothing phony about him, absolutely nothing. He was a good ball player, he could play the game, he knew how to play it, and he knew how to get along with his fellow teammates, all of them, black or white. And what does it mean to you to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award that bears Stan Musial's name? The greatest thing in the world. I, I, I've received many awards in my lifetime, but to receive this award, especially in the name of Stan Musial, probably was the greatest I've ever had. One of the true all-time greats, talking about another of the true all-time greats, Hank Aaron on Stan Musial. What better way to close the 2020 Musial Awards presented by Maryville University than with Hank Aaron? We hope the stories of our honorees lift you up and inspire us all to be good sports. On behalf of the St. Louis Sports Commission and the National Sportsmanship Foundation, thank you for watching.